knee high by the 4th of July. How about waist high by the 16th of June? Over six inches is when you run it over, you'll kill it. That's different. Oh yeah, did I mention that we're putting in a new So I don't know the full details about this, but I remember six, seven years ago, I just remember driving by this one day and all of a sudden there was a shed with a John Deere Model A trike tractor sitting right on top of there. Sorry, Model B. And an old Ford truck below it. Why? I don't know. Why are you asking? I think it's pretty dang cool. Oh, hello guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. And today, we got cows, we got crops, we got guys chopping, and I'm back on the farm. So. I just want to do a quick update for you, for you guys, and plus I want to tell you about the big changes we got going on on the farm. Hello, fellow fan, I'm assuming. So let's get out of this wind. Alrighty, so sorry about that. So, back on the farm, a lot has changed. So, just so you guys know, I was gone uh, working, traveling for work. I was out harvesting wheat down in uh, Texas and then Tennessee. So for those of you guys who don't know, I am an engineer for John Deere. Uh, I travel a lot for combines, I'm a test engineer. And uh, th just so you guys know, a project that I've been working on for a long time, over two years, a lot, myself along with countless and other people, just got released. It is the John Deere X9 Combine and the family of headers that were updated to go with it. The HDR, HDF, and then a whole complement of other headers with that. So that actually just got released and I am so excited about it. There's, I put a lot of work into this thing. A lot of people put a lot of work into this thing and there's a lot of good qualities with that combine. So I can go on a whole separate video about that if you guys would really want, but. Today we're on the farm, so we're gonna talk about farm stuff. And as you guys can see, there's a lot more red than green. I think the only green here on this farm right now is my green shirt. But anyway, a lot has changed. We'll just start right there. Those big tires, they are off the sprayer. We got this row crop tires back on the sprayer, and if you guys are wondering why, well, let's go find out. As you guys can see, knee high by the 4th of July. How about waist high by the 16th of June? The thing's just about at my waist. Normal people's waist, it's there. The stuff is tall. We planted on April 21st, so it was planted pretty early. But man, oh man, has this corn shot up. It is looking awesome. Just look as far as the eye can see. Nice dark green corn. You can kind of see the leaves are starting to curl. That means they're starting to get stressed a little bit with uh, rain. We haven't gotten rain in about a week and a half or so. So hope we're, and we're not gonna get rain for probably another couple days at least. We need a good rain shower, a nice day long soaker would be absolutely perfect. But this is the time of year where this corn is gonna shot, shoot up. I guarantee you by the next time I come out of here, look, he sprayed those weeds, noise. Pat sprayed these about a week ago or so, but the next time that we come out here, I guarantee this corn's gonna be about this tall. This type of day is when the corn just absolutely shoots up. This time of year, I should say. With this hot weather in June and July, the hot weather, warm temperatures, sun, very much so. This corn is absolutely loving it. It's gonna soak it in and it's really gonna sprout. It's my probably six inches below waist high. You guys gonna see. Next time it'll probably be almost at my chest. For sure my belly button though. So let's go take a look. So like I said, Pat sprayed these not too long ago and the fields look clean, look real clean. I sprayed this with uh, with just generic dual oh, a day or two after we planted and Pat came back and sprayed with uh, Status Halix GT and a little bit of Roundup I believe. So just basically our general grass and broadleaf control just to really keep the weeds at bay. Our chemical program, we try to do for corn, we try to sp spray uh, a broadleaf control and a grass control in the no-till when we, uh, probably two or three days after we plant, it's our ideal. And then we like to come in probably a week or two before it canopies, spray it again, really kill the weeds. And the reason for that is because when it canopies, we're almost at full canopy. But when it canopies, it sucks out all the sunlight for the weeds that are down below. So after it canopies, nothing can grow but the corn because you kind of need sunlight to grow. So that's why we like to spray it a week or two before canopy, kill the weeds, and that way when we get to canopy, 
the fields are going to be completely clean like this. Not a weed in sight. It's awesome. So anyway, this corn is tall. This is our first planted corn, but I want to show you guys something cool. We had a unique growing conditions. Our corn was planted in, a, in approximately three and a half weeks, including a couple days of weather downtime. But this corn was planted on April 21st. We finished planting corn on May 12th or 13th. So about three or four weeks. So this is our first plant of corn. Eh, four to six inches below my waist. Let's drive to our last planted cornfield. Or I'm not gonna drive the last planted cornfield. Those two fields right there were our second to last day planting. So they're pretty close. So let's go take a look. So this corn hasn't been sprayed its second time yet. You can kind of see there's a little bit of weeds starting to pop up. So yeah, it's kind of short, kind of short, but hello. So like I said, this stuff was planted on May 12th, which is still really good for us. Last year, we didn't even start planting in this field until May 15th, card will be right here. But you can look, this stuff is knee high. Our last planted corn is knee high by the 14th or uh, 16th of June. That is phenomenal. Like, oh my gosh. Kind of see a little guess row. But look at this, like that's, that's unreal. That is that is not typical for us guys. So we are really happy with our stand, how our corn's looking right now. Yeah, I just, there's not much else to say. But yeah, so our corn's been growing. Pat has been really spraying hard because, you know, this corn's really gonna take off. You can kind of see that, actually, I think Pat had sprayed this, but you can kind of see this is the downside of uh, spraying corn after it gets above, I believe, V4. So the fourth leaf, fourth main leaf. I'm not sure exactly, but spraying the corn when it's up over six inches is when you run it over, you'll kill it. And that's what he did. But yeah, so our corn's looking good. Let's go take a look at some bean fields. That's different. Oh yeah, did I mention that we're putting in a new bin? Yeah, we're putting in a new bin. Our old wet bin's gonna pull, come over here. We're gonna take it up, take the bottom out, move it, um, replace the two the two sections that were broken, replace those, and basically make it a new bin, and stick it right here. So yeah, that's gonna be happening in the next couple weeks, and we're gonna be getting a new wet bin. So let's go over and take a look at that. And I'm all over the place in this video. I do apologize for that, but we have a lot going on, an absolute lot going on. Look at, that's where our new bin's gonna be. So we're gonna load here. It's gonna come off that leg, come right to there. So we're hoping this hub is gonna be our soybean hub. All of our soybeans will hopefully go through this leg is what we're hoping. So we will have 8,000 there, 10,000 there, 12,000 there, 15,000 here. So we'll have almost 50,000 of storage and soybeans here. So yeah, kind of look, six, eight, 20. Not sure what this is. But yeah, we poured this on this June 8th, so a week ago, just over a week ago. And yeah, this is gonna be a nice bin site for us. Good 3,000 bushel an hour leg. Should we keep up for any soybeans that we have to dump in here? It's a little slower, but for soybeans, you don't need to really push it because, you know, you're not really going that fast. And there's, the yields aren't there from what corn. Soybeans, they yield about 50 to 60 bushel an acre. Corn's over 200, especially around here, it's closer to three, so. You need four or five more trucks an hour for corn, or four more, four times, four or five times the more amount of trucks for corn as opposed to soybeans. So we'll be good here. But anyway, let's go over and take a look at our uh, old bin. Sorry, but who other than me loves to do burnouts in the dust? Woo! Sorry, that's just fun. So this bin is broken. I've mentioned it before, a couple harvests ago, we had a wet spot happen and we had that big kink. Well, this, so it lasted a couple years with that kink, but this last, towards the end of harvest, we started seeing it lean and lean and lean. So yeah, this is getting bad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna disassemble this bin, basically piece by piece. So jack it up a little bit, take this bottom ring off, lower it down, take jack it, jack the next one up, look, Take the take this take the second ring off, lower it down, and so on and so forth. We're gonna junk these two rings right there, replace them, move that entire bin. We're actually gonna move this entire top as one piece, move it over there, and start building it back up. So we're effectively gonna have two new bins this year, and with this rep bin, we're gonna replace it with a uh, kind of a special. We're gonna replace it with a surprise bin. I'm not gonna tell you guys the specs, brand, or anything like that. But you can kind of see this is our this is our wet bin. 
Yeah. Just broken. Right there. So in order to prep this bin for pulling out, for getting it out of here, so what we gotta do is we gotta pull out what, what it's called the floor. So some bins do basically just have concrete and then go up. But most bins, especially I'd say 95% of the bins around here and every single one of the new bins have what they call the floor. So basically you can kind of see, see these open bolt holes? There used to be a floor that was just basically like a corrugated um, kind of well, corrugated floor that you could step on, put grain on, whatever, but it's corrugated so it allows air to come up through. So you can kind of see right there, there's a duct, and there's a fan on this side as well. And basically what that does is it pushes air up through. Because if you don't push air up through, you basically have, you get hot spots much easier. You can see, kind of see there's our fan. Hot spots much easier, and basically you just, you just want to be able to have air, the ability to push air up through. So yeah, we pulled this floor out. You also have your unload auger that's under the floor. So pulled that out. That's over next door, we're getting ready to put in. And now the next thing to do is take off all the electrical connections, unhook the fan, so you can kind of see. Electrical box, or not box, but electrical uh, wiring goes right there. We got our box sitting right there. So we gotta unhook all the smaller things like the electrical, tickle off the fan. And then, like I said, they're gonna probably pull this door off, jack everything up. Unbolt the, unbolt the bottom ring, take it off, lower it down, jack up on the next one, take all the bolts off, lower it down, so on and so forth, till it's taken apart. We'll move it next door, and then we're gonna have that bin. And then, the new bin's gonna come. Exciting times, that is for sure, guys. So yeah, that's new, obviously, as you guys can see. Or well, that's gonna be new. New thing coming in the next month or so. And other things we got going on, we're chopping right now. Nathan, Pat, and uh, Nathan, Pat, and Brian are chopping hay at our uh, good friend Mark Miller. He's but he's the one that basically supplies us with all the baggers that we need. He's a, kind of our partner with that. So we're chopping over to his place. We're gonna chop our stuff probably Friday or Saturday. Our oats and hay, and yeah. So now let's go look at some soybeans, guys. So I don't know how well you guys can see, but you can kind of see the leaves are starting to curl on the corn. That's how you know it's really starting to get dry. In my opinion, having a little bit of a drought stress is actually good for corn because when you get uh, when you start having corn that doesn't have water readily available, it starts to search for water. So what it does is it sends the roots down. Well, so right now, if we don't get water in the next two weeks, this corn isn't going to grow up at all. It's going to lose its height and probably lose a little bit of top end yield. But what's going to do is the roots are going to go down, and I like it when the roots go down because it prefer it uh, gets a much stronger stock. A much deeper root system, a much stronger stalk, which basically prevents uh, wind damage and winds from coming down late in the fall to blow down these, to blow the stalks over. So, like I said, I like it that we have a good, I like it when we have a good uh, heat stress in the middle of the year because it gets a deeper, stronger stalk. And for us, we don't mind deeper, stronger stalks because our corn on corn ground, we rip it up anyway. So that we all we churn dirt. But for our corn on bean ground, we have our beans, we just no-till it in. And deeper stalks doesn't hurt the beans because beans are much shallower crops. So yeah, long story short, that's why the corn, corn is curling and we're not too worried because that we actually prefer that. So now let's get going, look at some beans. So I'm in search for beans right now. I forgot, we don't have a ton of beans on this farm this year. But you can kind of see we cut the alfalfa last week. The stuff's already starting to grow back. Not a lot of alfalfa in here, but there's our newly seeded alfalfa last year, two years ago. This is the second season of alfalfa, and it's really starting to come in. It's already about this tall, so the alfalfa's good. We already got first crop hay off and made, so second crop will be three weeks away. Man, I've been out the farm so long, I completely forgot. I don't think we have any corn on the home farm this year. Corn at butches south of trees. Corn at butches uh, south of gravel. Corn at butches north of trees. Corn at uh, back 40 north, back hay at back 40 south. Corn at by well, corn at by Schaefer's, corn at Cahill's, corn at across the road, corn at uh, south of Grandma's, corn at west of Mailbox, corn everywhere. So, might have to travel to another farm to get to, to beans. So let's do it. Also, that's your alfalfa, the little stringy looking crop that you kind of see most of. Like all that's alfalfa. Great speed value. We don't chop a lot of it, we bale most of it, but we do we do chop when we're out of feed. Here's our new alfalfa bales, old alfalfa bales brought home. We grind up about 24 bales every other week. Just for our, putting our cattle ration. You can kind of see the pile of hay. 
I'm not sure what we're gonna do with this pit. We need to redo it at some point. I just don't know if we don't, we'll have the cash flow this year. The bin we needed to because it was broken and we need a wet bin. This one needs to be dug out. What we should do is actually dig into the, dig into the, the hillside another 50 feet, make it bigger, make it a little taller, dig into that hillside and put up a commodity shed. That'd be ideal, but we'll see what happens. But either way, we're about halfway on our silage pile, a little bit more than half. So, That'll last us till we shop silage again. That's actually why we planted later corn. Is that way, that way we could have uh, silage to chop in like September. There's haylids for our neighbor that we chop for. Haylids, more haylids. Yeah. So let's go find you guys some soybeans. So here's our soybean crop. This is our first planted soybeans of the year. We had a ton of manure on this stuff right here. So you can actually kind of see where the manure line was. See that, how that stuff's lighter, that stuff's darker. We had a ton of manure right here. We actually chopped a lot of this too. So that's why this stuff is a little bit darker than that. But you can kind of see, so we no-tilled up on that hill and we worked all the rest of this ground because we had manure, took hay stock, corn stock bales and had the manure just about everywhere where it wasn't no-tilled. But this soybeans are looking pretty decent, but it is very weedy. That's kind of the bad thing. So we're spraying corn right now. I'm hoping we're gonna start spraying soybeans probably early next week. As you can kind of see along the edges, especially there's a lot of grasses, broadleaf, uh, lamb's quarter. There's some water hemp in here as well. So you can kind of, they're just patches. There's some volunteer corn, but it's not that bad. I don't think we're gonna spray for it because it'd be very minimal. Sometimes we have to spray for volunteer corn because the processors don't like beans or corn in their beans. So if there is like a lot of corn out here, there's a chemical we can put in a spray for it. But obviously that takes money. So but yeah, so this corn's about eight inches, or beans are about eight inches tall, 15 inch spacing. Yeah. Now let's go take a look at the last planted beans that we had planted about three weeks ago. And that was, we planted that really late because we hauled out all of our manure on that ground. So let's go take a look. So like I was saying, these are our last planted beans. You can kind of see, they're just starting to poke up. You can just start to row them. So it's gonna be a little bit before you can actually uh, pop up. Like, well, I should say, they're about this tall. You can just start to row them. So the reason why this is planted so late is you can kind of see, look at all these darker brown spots. We hauled a ton of manure, literally a ton. Well, more than that, but hauled all the manure. And this is the last 80 acres, this is the last stuff that we planted this year. And this is still pretty good. I mean, last year, we still were planting beans for two weeks. So, we're happy with it. Especially that it's coming out of the ground. Get a good rain shower later this week. GoPro's dying, so I gotta be quick. Get a good rain shower later in the week, these beans will shoot up. But look, they're just a little bitty tall. Inch or so tall, so let's go back. Just went out and took a look at my, visit my goddaughter and my aunt, Amber and Rhonda. Took a look at their like, 10 new kitties put them all up on instagram they're so cute if you guys haven't followed me on instagram you guys should to see cute stuff like that especially when my gopro dies because my phone rarely dies my gopro always dies so recap we're going to be uh getting a new bin moving this bin over next door getting a new wet bin specs undefined yet corn is growing good sweet corn's growing good soybeans way down there growing good we're chopping right now we just got done cutting hay we're gonna be chopping oats later this week hopefully i can be up and help out with that but we'll see but anyway Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Do you guys want to, when I travel, do you guys want to see some of the stuff that I'm at? So like for flood irrigated, you guys want to see rice, you guys want to see Canada. What do you guys want to see? And then what do you guys want to see on the farm? More tours? Do you want to do uh, equipment demos? How to drive series? What do you guys think? Yeah. And then of course, guys, we got plenty of summer activities. And so we're going to be cutting hay, spraying, chopping, which is going to lead into corn chopping. So hay and rye chopping, which is gonna lead into corn chopping, which is gonna lead into corn combine, bean combining. It's not gonna be long, guys, so you're gonna wanna stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button and like button if you guys don't mind. But let's go ahead and close out the video. If you guys have made it this far, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hearts and Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now. Hmm, that looks peculiar. Oh, my lord. You guys are gonna have to stay in to tune in a video or two to see what this thing is, but it's gonna be sweet.